Melvin Hunt here from Kansas State University, Department of Animal Science, where I did teaching and research for 35 years, now retired, but I had the good fortune to be able to work with this heavy ham, bone-in ham class, something that I consider really a traditional part of most processed meat contests. And it is one that uh, requires skills in various segments. You've got to pick the right material and hope that you trim it properly for external appearance and shape it properly when it is thermally processed and hope that your curing uh, solutions and chemistry all work to give you a marvelous flavor. Let's talk about a few of the details. Because on the exterior, you like to have, at least now, in these days, a ham that has very little external fat showing. Just enough uniform cover and be able to have a really nice shape and a uniform cured, as uniform cured color as possible. This ham, I think, is quite exceptional in those regards, as is the texture. It has a slight amount of moisture showing on the surface, which is nothing wrong with that. It's as you can be as dry, just as easy as you are as slightly moist. And in the center part right here, uh, it's very difficult to get that pocket to be free of intermuscular fat. Over in this case, uh, we have uh, the external has a, a little more ham cover or a little more fat cover on it. It's not quite as smooth and it doesn't have what I call the the really ideal color of a rich mahogany exterior appearance. This one's got a little bit, well, nothing too bad with this, uh, except that we do see a little more external fat. One of the, the, the less than desirable effects uh, of the appearance on the internal of this ham is there's a lot of air pockets. This may do to uh, maybe their automatic injector was uh, putting a little extra air in there along with the cure, but uh, this, this one has quite a few air pockets and, uh, that we would like to try to avoid. In contrast with this ham up here, has almost none. So one of the little tricks you need to try to do is figure out how to eliminate those in a ham like this. And over in this one, we have a nicely shaped ham that has a larger void right in here between the inside and outside ham muscles. But it is also maybe a little dry because of the humidity in the smokehouse, uh, how much was absorbed or whatever. But in my opinion, this is not quite the golden uh, color that you would see on the, these upper, these other hams here. So this is, uh, some people may like this, and that's quite all right if that's part of their business, but the directions and the, the guidelines say that a, that a ham ought to have a nice golden mahogany appearance. Some other things that are important here come to with the shape of the ham and how long the shank is. Uh, this ham, I think, is pretty ideal. If you stand it up here, the tibia and fibula are supposed to be part of that, but you don't want it too long. And what is nice about that is that the way that the, the person who made this ham really did a nice job of shaping it on the posterior end. And this person also did a little more, but I think we have some indentions here and a little bit of a part here that is not as attractive as you would find in this one. In contrast, this, uh, this ham is pretty well shaped. Uh, and so other than the exterior color, well, this is kind of saying, hey, this is looking pretty good. Well. When you come back to this class, the key major weighting in the scoring scale has to do with flavor. And so you come through here and you'd like to have a nice internal and external appearance, but uh, the bottom line is in flavor. In fact, of the thousand points here, I think 400 points or so is flavor. And uh, that is going to be something that you're just going to have to refine. you got to hope that you don't have some off odors that are accompanying the, the raw material that comes with us, whether it's a sex odor or, or some others. Uh, but uh, the flavor has is, is got to be due to a nice uniform injection of the cure. And you've got to balance out uh, the salt content such that it's not going to be judged as too salty. So... Uh, the aroma, uh, some of the, the, the hams didn't have quite what I would say as a characteristic classy ham aroma. 
but uh, and and aroma doesn't always go with the uh, with with the flavor. But overall, you just need to to work with your uh, the composition of your cure in combination with the smoke that you apply, so that you get a nice uniform flavor that would be attractive. This is a ham that uh, was in the, the competition. It was really very nice in shape and color at the beginning. But when we went to uh, cut into the ham, there was a major, major surprise that there's no way that the processor could know this, but the femur has split due to whatever reason. I don't think this was the, the pig would have been able to walk into the plant very easily if they were injured like this. I think this is a defect that may have occurred somewhere during the anti-mortem to uh, uh, in the shackling area perhaps or the pig got his leg caught between the rungs of uh, the pens or something. But uh, there was very a very big surprise here to find all the, the hemorrhage that was around this, this joint area in the ham.